Okay, folks, heading out to my uh, buddy Jarrett's place. Apparently, he's got some bottles out behind his property and said I could take a drive out. Now, the unfortunate thing about this is I'm really pressed for time. Got done work at 5 o'clock. I fueled up. I've been driving for about 15 minutes. And it's going to be geez, probably another half an hour drive. And it gets dark here about 7 o'clock now, so doesn't leave me a whole lot of time but anyways once I get there if uh, there's anything worthwhile getting any footage with I'll get you back up on if not well who knows <laughs> <laughs> a few moments later well folks I didn't get any footage at the dig site but this is basically the only bottle I got there it was worth saving the Kuiper square face I think it says who the Kuiper mighty takes soundly sleeps and fit awakes. <laughs> it's got a little saying on it. It is a screw top. First time I've seen one like that. Pretty cool bottle. And I'm just down the road here a little ways from where I was uh, digging at my buddy's place. But uh, it's an old area. But unfortunately today, this one here is all that come out. Okay, viewers, here's this De Kuiper's Square Face Gin Bottle cleaned up. I got a lid for it. Let me spin that around there. You can see that. The date on the base. We got the Illinois glass mark there and a four on the right hand side. That's going to indicate 1934. And also, the saying on it says, Who to Kuiper nightly takes, soundly sleeps, and fit awakes. That's a nice little bottle. And I suspect that's probably worth about ten bucks, I'd say. Lovely color. And a nice embossed one at that. Well, folks, I'm right in the willy wags here. But I got a patch of stuff. All kinds of debris through here. Even some old tires and stuff through here. Some glass. One of those old glasses there. That was broke. I had a food container that doubled as a glass once it was empty. But there's a bunch of, uh, some of the stuff is quite old. There's Okay, there's a uh, the Kuiper gin bottle lid there. That's probably from the 30s or 40s. I'll take that lid, that's in good condition. I probably have a bottle that'll fit on. I'm going to have to come back in the future because there's still all ice and snow here. I'm not no telling what might be in here. It looks like it's been all plowed up and it's kind of buried. So, a little bit of work I guess. Go back at you. I'll have a quick look around, and if anything's on the surface, I'll get you back up. Okay, so I do see some old stuff mixed in here. Check this out. Shared to a blue crown mason jar. Well, that's quite old, and right here, that's frozen into the ground, but it's a very purple manganese glass piece. Oh, there's some more there inside that bucket. Wow, look how purple that is. Very nice. That is very purple. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I'll keep pecking around in here, see if anything whole turns up. 
Well, the majority of this stuff definitely looks like it's from the 50s and 60s. But there is some older stuff mixed in here with it, as we had seen with some of that old, older shards. The manganese glass and the old broken crown mason jar. Look at that old ray gun probably from the 50s or 60s. Right here. Uh, if I can reach it. There's an old Lysol cork top. That's probably from the 40s. Maybe even the 30s. So that's a little bit older. I'll take that one. Green liquor bottle down there. Yeah, this stuff. Big, all wire fence all through here. There's a metal cup over there. Galvanized oh. bucket. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff all down underneath there. So, no telling what we might find in here once this thaws out. Just sort of a random look, so. Yeah. There's some stuff in here for sure. Well, just out picking up more scraps today, folks. And I see some things here I left behind last year. I'll take that. Half ounce little cork top bottle. Here's a blown and a mold one here. Surprised I left that. Yep, that might even turn out to be manganese glass. Doesn't look like it right now, but. So there's that. Here's a little panel side screw top. Here's a little perfume. Sample, it says on it. Cool. Probably from the 1930s. There's another little one there. No lid on that one though. Huh. Porcelain doorknob. There's a uh, an old fuse. Don't see a date on it. Big piece of cobalt blue glass. I'll take that. Put that in the shards box. All right. So far, so good. Okay, I'm back to this rock, folks, that I was at in a previous video. I just seen this here, so I flipped that up out of there. And that's a little tin. I don't think I noticed that before. Water in it. A little brass tin or something. And here, there's a nice Listerine corker. I'm sure I can get a buck for that. Date on the bottom, 1934. That four over here beside that Owen Illinois glass mark means that's from the 30s, 1934 to be exact. If there was a dot beside it, it'd be 1944. Here's a Mellon's food jar here. Ah, oh, it's all cracked. I bet that happened this year too. I should've taken that. It's a shame. Oh well, can't win them all. I'm going to take this here, though. Get that opened up. Well, folks, I'm out of here for today. There's a few more spots I'd like to hit, but I think there's still too much snow on the ground. I did get a few more finds out of that spot right there, though. So that's one of the things I'm going to be doing this year, along with digging, is I'm going to be going around to my previous locations and cleaning up on some of my... Uh, leftovers the ones that I've left behind all right so I'll probably see a few more episodes of that activity good day folks thanks for joining me here for another bottle digging recap extravaganza yeah this video it was more like an old Frankenstein video, just short digs and all kinds of stuff just mashed together there. So <laughs> why stop at the digging portion? Let's continue right into the recap. Why not? Let's just get everything out on the table. All right. So 
First up, I'm not going to do the bottles in the video. I'm going to show you these ones right here before we go any further. So hang tight. Get yourself a drink. If you want a drink, doesn't matter what you're drinking, just grab onto one. Because we're going to fly through these and you might want to have a sip to wet your whistle. Cheers, folks. Jungle Jim. Okay, folks, so concerning these bottles here, I got these at a flea market. Check it out. One buck for this one. This is one dollar each. Apparently there were other ones on the table before I got there, and that's why it says each. But I paid a buck for this. Up around the shoulder, it's embossed here. Yorkshire Relish. And along the face here, it says Good old Backhouse and Company. I couldn't find an exact date online. Kind of hard to narrow it down, but giving this a globby, drippy applied lip here. Check it out. I'll go slowly there. I'm going to have to say that's probably 1880s or 1890s. And for a buck, I'll take that. Now, if I put a glass stopper in that, which I have many of them, I could probably get four, four or five bucks for that, I would think. All right, next. Concerning these two blue teardrop bottles. An old gal had four of these on her table. Check them out. They're from the 1970s, so they're not real old. Nice cobalt blue teardrop bottle. Four of them on her table. Guess how much she wanted for them. Just take a guess. Five bucks for all four. As you can see, I've only got two left. Because I've sold two. Put down in the comments how much you'd pay for one of these because I was surprised at how much I got for them. Just take a guess or how much do you think you would pay for one of those? People love cobalt blue bottles folks. They collect them. Time of the video. Cheers, folks. And don't forget, leave a thumbs up, please. I'm going to just quickly get these three off the table. And get into this box of bottles here. I like the way that's all separated. First, I'll show you this one that was found at the beginning of the video. It's the DeKuyper's Square Face Gin Bottle. Who De Kuiper nightly takes, soundly sleeps, and fit awakes. Date on the bottom, got the Illinois glass mark, Owens, Illinois glass mark, sorry, and it's going to be 1934. If there was a dot there by that four, it would be 1944, but there isn't. Nice bottle I dug up at my buddy's way up in the woods. Uh, I didn't get any footage of digging because he was kind of over my shoulder there and he didn't really want to be on film so anyways that's what I've got out of that site just that one bottle this lid I found at a different site which you've seen in the video and uh, so that turned out great it goes to the bottle so <laughs> how could you beat that awesome so next up folks is this nice amber Lysol bottle and that was in a site that I just discovered the other day I'm going to have to get back once it thaws out and uh, do some more digging around. But I'm going to be taking a lot of these just common bottles this year. I don't know how many of those I've left behind in the past and thrown out. My word, I wish I had them now. So I got that one out of that site. I got uh, this shard, nice purple shard. Got the shards box out of that site. Uh, what else did I get there? There's another purple shard. For some reason, I seem to have misplaced that Crown Mason jar uh, shard. That would have been a nice one to have to put in the shards box. What else I get out of that site? Uh, this little amber here. Probably like from the 50s, maybe. I don't know, it's kind of like an Anison bottle or something. Anything else in here? No, I think that's it from that site. So let's get into the other ones from the uh, third site in the video. Okay, so the third site... I went back to uh, 
a previous site that I dug in in the past, like I say, to, just to collect some of the uh, odds and ends that I left behind. And this is what I found there that I had left behind in previous digs. Number one, this nice big cobalt blue shard. Perfect for the shards box. That's a nice flat piece there. We've got this tin, which needs to be cleaned up. I'll have to soak that in something to clean that up a little better. But it does wind open, and there's nothing inside of it. So I don't know what that's all about, or what was uh, previously in it, but there that is. Listerine bottle. Check it out. Like I say, yeah, same with those Lysol bottles. How many of these have I left behind that I wish I had now? Here's some sort of little panel side bottle. Real old broken thread pattern on it, as you can see there. Well, it's probably from the late 20s or early 30s. Milk glass. Couldn't get the lid off it. You probably can't hear that, but there is uh, stuff inside there, hard and shaking around. Here's a cute little milk glass that I got out of the same site. That cleaned up really well. And nice blown bottle, and it's looking like this is going to be manganese glass, this one here. Nice BIM bottle. Tooled lip. Two more bottles here, folks, and we're going to wrap it up. Just a little graduated mid, a little miniature, half ounce. That's a nice one. People like collecting the little bottles as well, so that's easily, it's an easy sell there. And also, I discovered I had left this one there, which is a sample perfume. See, it says sample there. Embossed sample right on the face there. Very cool with the original lid on it. So a little sample perfume. Very nice. Okay, folks, so that's it for this one. I'm going to say one last cheers for you folks. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment and a thumbs up. It's almost thought out enough that we can get back right in there digging like digging up the ground so that's going to be great here real soon i still got a couple more digging videos to post before we get into new ones though so hang tight folks thanks for watching have a great day over and out